the year is 1991. Now I know that both my own crew, uh, Redhead of Sync, uh, the Flying Egg of Omega, another crew, were experimenting with 4 pixel sync scrolling. And now we need to shift the topic completely because normal sync scrolling is done by poking the glue. You change what resolutions it thinks it's in, you fool its microcode, and you change the length of scan lines. But this is not how the 4 pixel sync scrolling works. So now we go back to the shifter, the chip that reads latched memory, four words, puts it into its shift registers, runs them at 8, 16 or 32 megahertz and outputs pixels on the, on the RGB or, or uh, mono outs. And you can't change due to the bit planes. You, you can't really do anything else but scrolling 16 pixels at a time. However, Alien was the first, Alien of ST connection, was the first to release a 4 pixel sync scroll. He realized that when in full screen mode, this is when your code is synced to the video memory raster, you're poking the glue every single scan line to enable left border, right border, left border, right border, left border, right border. When you enable the left border, when you start displaying graphics early, if you then stay in the wrong resolution, you can do this with going to high or medium, I think he used medium, which means that uh, the shift registers are running at 16 megahertz instead of 8. So if you stay there for some time and you then go back to low resolution, the shifter is actually confused. It has put some data into its registers, it realizes they are now full, it needs to output graphics, but due to our change in frequency, it's not at its regular location. What happens is that it's going to start outputting graphics for cycles, 8 cycles or 12 cycles too early. This corresponds to 4, 8, 12 pixels. So Alien did a scroll where he is scrolling the screen 4 pixels at a time. And he uses a special effect to show everybody, hey, I'm doing something nobody has done before. Now, move ahead many, many years. I think, and I need to check this, that the year is 2012. Where LGBK, Paulus Simos, uses something every single demo developer who's ever opened a border has seen. That is... If you switch frequencies, if you mess things up and you go back to your regular uh, code editor, the screen might wrap around. I've seen this plenty of times from when I started doing demos. Uh, and it was bothersome because some of the content that was supposed to be at the rightmost column was now on the left and blah blah. And he realized this means that the shifter is outputting graphics too early. And it's, it keeps on doing it. You're not doing anything per line. This is something that happened at some point and the shifter stays in this mode. So he started looking, is it possible to get the shifter to output graphics for 8, 12 pixels early steadily? By, by just making one trigger, you get this to happen. Now this is non full screen because full screen anyway needs you to, to do things every scan line. So this is a regular 320 by 200 color graphic screen. Um, and he realizes that this is almost possible. He is going to medium or high resolution while the graphics is being displayed on screen. He desyncs the shifter um, and this works. And I'm not going to go into what wake states on the ST are. Uh, there's another talk for that, but he gets this to work in perfectly fine two out of the four wake states that an ST can be in when it boots up half the time in one of them and unfortunately one of the positions one of the four eight twelve can never be reached in one of the wake states an ST can wake up in and this is you know quite sad uh, it means that this is not a viable 
scroll for everyday use. Uh, it's not like an ST was an everyday use in 2012, but, but here we are. We're demo developers. We just want to exploit the machinery to do things it's never done before um, and brag for other demo developers. He also has another issue. Desyncing the shifter like this. The shifter is extremely simple and extremely complicated. It has internal logic to clear registers when to load new data. Um, and it sometimes gets into a state where it's not really keeping up with its own registers. And this means that it's displaying every 16 pixels uh, blank. And this happens every now and then. Now, LGBK is able to find uh, a way to, we think, solve it so that if you have these every other 16 pixels blank, uh, you can switch type of sweet, uh, shifter desyncing and it will look fine. But this is very cumbersome. Now, he does release this. So if you look up B scroll by LGBK, uh, you'll see him scrolling a full screen one pixel at a time on a 512 kilobyte machine now if go back to what i said before the only way to scroll something one pixel at a time sideways on the atari st is to either do it by shifting registers with the cpu or by pre-shifting pre-calculating your shift and you can't do 16 full screens in the memory uh, of a 512k machine and you don't have CPU time to do it real time. So he probably does something that is otherwise not possible to do with this four pixel um, non full screen scroll. And this is often called a sync scroll. I I'd like to call it the shifter scroll. It's so different from when you get the glue to make different length scan lines. Uh, so that I would want to call it the shifter scroll. And then he found out what the negative is with this. So we're physically getting the shifter to start displaying graphics earlier for 812 pixels. This means the whole screen is physically moved and nobody wants to watch a screen where the sides of the screen are constantly moving around. I promise you, it looks horrible. So you need to spend some CPU time clearing the appropriate amount for the shift mode you're in this does take some CPU time and you lose 16 pixels display, displayable uh, width. So you now have a 304 by 200 screen. Now we're going to get to what uh, cost sync to go on this journey. The what if game journey, which has, has grown over time. But what happened was that Ijor, who is, um, I think, the most detailed examinator of the ST hardware um, who's ever been. He's even decapped the chips to figure out how they're working internally. Um, he wrote in passing in 2017 on the Atari forum that, oh, interestingly, uh, if you... So, so there are two bits that control the resolutions of the ST. So by, by putting the value zero in a register, you get low uh, resolution, the 320 by 200. Put a 1, first bit set, uh, you get medium resolution. If you put a 2 there, you know, setting the second bit but clearing the first, you get high resolution. But ooh, you say, what happens if I set both bits? I put a 3 in that register. It's an undefined mode. And what I figured, and I'm sure that we all have tried this but never understood what happened, what he saw was that the glue sees this as being high resolution. The shifter, however, just says this mode does not exist. The pixel clocks, basically all the clocks in the shifter stop working. I saw this and I made a comment in my notes. This can probably be used for scrolling. Let's get back to what the shifter scroll is. You confuse the shifter so that it will start outputting data in a different position. And you can only do this, by the way, with a four clock cycle granularity. This is why it gets to four pixels. Would have been awesome to do two or one. But if I can stop the shifter clocks by just setting this mode, I can delay the shifter. 
I can tell it, wait 4 pixels, wait 8 pixels, wait 12 pixels. So I tried this, um, and I think I tried it in 2021. Uh, I mean, I had lots of nodes to go through. And it worked. And I was pretty happy there. Because what I didn't realize at the time was that everything LGBK had seen was still true. So I'm not actually getting it to any other magic than what was able to do with the going to medium and high resolution. Um, it's still gonna not work fully for one position in one of the four wake states and not some of the time in another of the wake states. And then I did more testing in 2022. And no matter how much I tried on my regular ST or the STE that I have, this trick works on STE too, you don't need it, but it works. I could not get the every other 16 pixels blank. And so I realized there is actually something that this way of creating a four pixel shifter scroll gains in addition to what we knew 10 years earlier. And that is, I can just detect which wake state the computer is in. If it's in wake state two or four, go ahead. If it's in three, ask the user, does this scroll and some example look okay? And if it's in wake state one, where I know it's never gonna work in one of the positions, tell the user, turn off your computer, reset doesn't work, it's not enough, turn off your computer, turn it back on and let's try again. This is good enough to release a demo. And that's the origin of what if game. Now, why a game? Well, here we get to how, what, what I just told you, you can do a sync scroll 16 pixels at a time. If you use four buffers, then you can do it four pixels at a time. So what use is the shifter scroll? And now we get all the way back to the bit planes. The shifter scroll moves the screen physically. The graphics are still at the same address. They're just displayed offset by four A12 pixels. This means graphics that are next to each other when moving at four pixels can just be moved into their appropriate words. I don't need to and or graphics to move them four pixels at a time. That is what makes the four pixel scroll more performance effective than the non four pixel scroll. And that is what Alien used. So he did a scroll that is moving very blocky sprites four pixels at a time and more of them than you ever could if you, if you needed to and or these sprites. For our game engine, it means that everything moving at background speed, four pixels at a time, can be addressed much more effectively than things moving at a different speed. So the example game in our game engine has lots of animated, and you would call them sprites, uh, sort of they are sprites, but they're background, they're animated background. They might then launch regular sprites, not moving four pixels at a time. But these huge animated objects are not taking the CPU time that you would need to use if you did not have a four pixel shift to scroll. And that is the performance advantage gained in What If Game. That is what we showed uh, with our preview and will show when we do the final version. Um, and that is also why we know that this is the most effective side-scrolling engine that has ever been released on the Atari ST. Now let's spend some more time on um why we don't need to and or. I think uh, that's the, the most important part here. So a brief interjection with more detail. What you usually do when you want to display a tiled background scrolling is that you have all your tiles and you have them pre-shifted. So here we have some sort of a ground tile 
uh, the uh, shaded green area uh, belongs to the tile, even though there's no graphics in it, you'll soon understand why. And the green vertical lines are, of course, uh, a full 16-bit word in memory. You can see I've got 16 pixels here in between them. All right, so here's one of my, my sprites, background sprites. Uh, here's uh, another, and it also has this shaded area to the left of it that actually belongs to the sprite. And if we just blit this or move these to the screen in the most effective way possible, moving words, um, we're going to see that we can draw this uh, blue um, object sprite and we then move the background tile on top of it. And this looks perfect. This is great. This is our game background. Now we need to scroll these four pixels to the left. And luckily we pre-shift, of course. Uh, so we have this ground tile already pre-shifted four pixels to the left. And now we can see why that uh, green shaded area belonged to the sprite. Uh, it's going to cross a 16-bit word boundary. And the same, of course, for our object background tile. Now we're going to do the same. We're going to move these to the screen in the most effective way possible. So we're going to draw this uh, blue object tile, and then we're going to move the background tile, and, and we are obviously losing part of the object tile here. Again, we're moving these. So the black, there's no transparent when it comes to ones and zeros. Uh, when we move the on top tile or the next tile, that's going to be beside the first one we draw, uh, we're going to destroy some of it because we are using, we're drawing these uh, complete words. Now, this is what you would need to get away from by and oring because uh, maybe it's not visible here, but let's continue. Let's scroll four more pixels and let's scroll four more pixels. And as, as you can see, this wouldn't work. Now you can get around this by and oring, which is um, programming retro speak for basically saying we can do transparency. You have masks and you make sure that by using more CPU time, you can draw these next to each other anyway. And, and that's what you need to do if you're going to use regular scrolling the way that has always been done. Now let's get to the shift to scroll and, and why it's so much more effective. So get back to our background. All right, we have a shift to scroll, a shift of four pixel scroll, and we're going to scroll these tiles four pixels to the left. Uh, yeah, that, that looks good. Okay, yeah, fine, no problem. As you can see, um, they're still within their 16-bit boundaries. We can move these uh, in the most effective way possible if we're going to do some animation to it, etc. They're not overlapping in any way, and, uh, and we can just keep doing this four times until we've hit a new 16-pixel boundary where the regular sync scroll is taking over. I hope this explains why this method is so extremely effective at gaining performance. Now this was released in 2022. But there exists an alternative dimension where the Atari engineers knew this. Now I'm, I'm not trying to blame anybody or say that, oh, they were stupid. No, they were not. With the time they had, they did amazing stuff. And I fully understand them not realizing that you could do the magic glue poking stuff and create a sync scroll. And I do understand that they did not see how um, passing the shifter clocks could do a four pixel scroll. But if they had known, and it's not impossible to have known, they could have made sure that the ST wake state issue that they knew about, we're pretty sure they knew about it because there are some design decisions made that seem to be, oh, we have this issue. If we do this, it's not a problem. They still exist, but it's not a problem. If they had synced up to a single wake state, or at least solved um, some of the issues around wake states, and if they had documented being able to delay the shifter and you know how to create a sync scroll by poking the glue registers, a game SDK if you want, they could have made the ST a side-scrolling monster machine already back in 1985. And that was the purpose of the What If Game Demo released at Silaventure, to explore this what if they had realized this and documented it. I hope you liked this 
technical introduction to SD scrolling and side scrolling and what the actual trick is that we are using and abusing uh, when we're doing this engine. Thank you very much.